Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Novelties, the life of a teacher researcher. Today with me a very special guest who is a professor at the University of Warwick and he has both English language teaching and teacher development experience in Japan, Hong Kong, Europe. He also supervises a group of PhD students which is related with teacher education development and he's also interested in the use of videos when it comes to teacher education development. With me, Steve Mann. Steve Mann, welcome. Thank you very much for your time and being here. Great, thanks for inviting me. Okay, my pleasure, my pleasure. My first question for you, Steve. Um, last week I spoke with Scott Thornbury yeah. and we were talking about both the importance of not only just practice as teachers but also mm. the research and the relationship in mm. between. Yeah. And we came to the conclusion that as teacher we should really try to look for collaborative practices mm. between teachers and themselves. Now I read an article that you published last year which really fascinated me, which mm. was the one collaborative and dialogic reflection in second language teacher education. Yeah. Now my question for you is, what exactly to start off with, what exactly is this collaborative and dialogic reflection? How do you interpret this? Mm. Okay, well in some ways it's, it's quite simple and in some ways it's quite complicated. So if we start with the simple idea is that um, traditionally reflective practice has been seen as an individual and written pursuit so that when people um, did reflective practice or when it was talked about in teacher education it was often as an individual diary entry or someone kept a journal so it was quite introspective and quite individual so to move reflective practice into a more collaborative and dialogic conception or way of looking at it is to say that reflection can also be collaborative, it's something you can do with one or two or three other people, something that you can do with your learners maybe, and that those processes are interesting if they're dialogic. And by dialogic I think it means both in conversation with other people, having a dialogue with other people, preferably with a peer, with somebody who's doing a similar job to you right. and similar interests, um, but also collaborative um, dialogic in the sense that you might use um, some data, it could be a recording of a class or some learner's work or a transcription or a bit of video, which helps that dialogic process. So dialogue doesn't mean just between people, it means between people and some kind of object or affordance or data. Right, so you, you'd recommend people who are watching, teachers who are watching or researchers even as well, to try to look for people who are actually similar to themselves in mm. order to look for an environment where they all are open to learn from each other as well. Yeah. Because some teachers might not be very open to or critique so to say or people making yeah. comments on the lessons or... Yeah, I think that's, I mean it's always, it's always um, well, it's always difficult, it can be difficult to find like-minded people right. who, who are interested in, in working on some, a some aspects of practice, maybe designing new materials, introducing more blended learning, flipped classroom, whatever the focus is. And sometimes you won't find people in your institution um, who, who are interested in the same things as you, but the sure. good... The good thing about the kind of work that you're doing and Cecilia and others is that is that there's a lot more what Steve and I um, call in this book um, reflective practice we call reflective practice in the wild I, I don't think it's a particularly original term but what we mean by that is that outside kind of institutional courses MAs there's this kind of exciting work that's going on in social media on platforms where people are finding like-minded people and finding ways to work um, with other practitioners who maybe don't live in the same street, in the same city, in the same institution. So that's, I think, really exciting about, about the growth of kind of online communities, communities of practice, um, and, and these 
burgeoning platforms for, for, for people to share ideas. Great. You mentioned the, the idea of social media and that it has opened a lot of doors for teachers as well to share their experiences. Mm. For those teachers who are willing to actually start collaborating with other teachers and looking for this dialogue in order to, to progress together, mm. how would you recommend them to actually start once they have found people to actually carry out this process? What would the first steps yeah. be? The first steps be? Okay, well, I mean, there are probably lots of different answers to that question, but, but I think that the first step is to say, you know, there's the period where you, you'll get to know each other, exchange ideas, um, and you will be in a, in a process of getting to know each other. But beyond that, I think if it's going to sustain itself, then you need some kind of shared purpose, whether it's being more organized about the way that you share ideas and materials, or preferably having some sort of joint focus. Um, that initially, might, you might not call it research, but, but it might be a process of saying, well, we've both got, we both seem to, to have this issue with our students, that we want them to do more outside the class. So let's, let's both think about that, come up with, with some action points, some things right. that we think we could implement, whether it's materials or, or some, some methodology. So I think that that's what drives the relationship forward, so that it's not a talking shop, that we're not just reflecting... Right. Um, and sharing anecdotes, right? I think that's valuable, but in order for it to sustain itself and become something more than that, then it needs to be more action or orientated. And you know, whether we call that action research or exploratory practice doesn't really matter, right? But that it will probably be something a bit more systematic yes. than simply talking to each other. I guess what, what happens is that, is that it's always an interesting mix of reflecting on your practice right. and reflecting on other other people's practice. So so what what happens is that is that you you learn things, you you develop, you pick up ideas, you have realizations from engaging in other people's research and reflections. And sometimes that's just a process of oh that's interesting but that has nothing to do with me. And sometimes it's, oh, that's interesting, and I wonder whether I, I might be able to use that. Or that's made me realise something about the way that you structure a task or the way you get people to do things. I think, um, you know, one of the things that we've suffered from maybe is that kind of black and white division into good things and bad things. Right. And that actually the interesting stuff is somewhere in the middle. And previously just talked about grey areas or third spaces, yeah. but we kind of know what is a good answer and a bad question, answer, and I kind of agree with you that, that you know, we shouldn't be too quick to label things as good or bad, but actually the most interesting areas for reflection are those things we're not sure about and what yeah. Dick, Al Dick Allwright called and Judith Hanks called puzzles right. rather than problems puzzles, things that are uh, hmm, not really not sure about that. Yeah, no, I agree. But, That's but, the interesting stuff. Yeah, and, and at the same thing, um, as you talk about this, every single teacher creates then its own point of view through the dialogue that is emerging yeah. in, the, in the classroom as well. Yeah, and none of us get enough opportunities to do that because, right. because as teachers we spend a lot of time, you know, explaining grammar or lexis or organizing people, telling people to open up books or to stop talking, put away your mobile phone. That a lot of talk, you know, when we get into staff rooms might be about form filling or, you know, the thing having a moan about a particular class. There aren't that many spaces in our professional life yeah. where we really can open things up and get into to articulating in real time. What do I really think about that? Mm. Yeah, exactly. And that makes us all, just to sum every, everything up, try to sum everything up, I think that makes every single teacher in itself an agent of change, basically. Mm. That there is no such thing as the perfect teacher, but that we're always developing 
each and every single teacher in its own way. Yeah, I mean, Julian Edge always used to say um, that that teacher development is a is a process of becoming, right. and and so it doesn't it doesn't stop. Right. Um, but on the other hand, we need to ward against the idea that a teacher always needs to change what they do, because that's equally unhealthy. Right. That if something's working, then why change it? Yeah. Just because education is locked into innovation and change, a lot of it is change for it, for its own sake, innovation for its own sake. Change what, what would be interesting to change, but yes. keep those things that are working working well. And um, and maybe, uh, well definitely, teachers are not valued enough in, in making making those judgments about what what is actually working here and, and what could we work on a little more. Perfect. I think that's a wonderful way to finish this interview. Thank you very much. Good to meet you. Yeah, no, pleasure is all mine. Pleasure is all mine. Thank you. I would like to thank Steve Mann once again for sharing his knowledge with all of us. And so once again, we come to the conclusion that it is very important for all of us teachers to look for these collaborative practices in order to step up our game. Now we have been talking today about different ways of achieving this, but another way is actually to attend English language teaching conferences. But why exactly is attending conferences so important? Now that is going to be the question of the week. So either leave a comment on Twitter at Dirk Laagwaard, on Instagram at The Teacher Researcher, on Facebook Novelties Vlog, or on the YouTube channel The Teacher Researcher. I will be attending next weekend the TESOL Spain conference in Madrid where I will be giving a talk as well called Create the Pieces Together but Construct the Puzzle by Yourself. Interested? Then make sure you do not miss out on next week's vlog. Have a lovely week everybody and remember once again that a great teacher never stops learning. Take care.